things you cannot def- defy. And I find that it's just, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, all you got to do is look at Hillary Clinton and see it's true. How true. How true. I mean, she, she didn't always look like a bowling pin. <laughs> yeah, that evolution made it. It just came around. Yeah, look, look who's talking. I mean, I was once slim and handsome. Look what happened to me with time. It happens to all of us. You're, you're so right. I just find it funny because no matter how these people project themselves as the super person, you know what? One day they're going to find themselves in the ground or, or in the air being burned up or whatever, you know? <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, don't say it. It's not they're going to find themselves there, but there's no, you know, the longer you live, it's like a slow death. It's a slow torture. It's like you're watching yourself decay. Things, things falling off. It's like an old Buick with parts falling off. The difference is, is that with an old Buick, you can go buy the parts and have them rechromed. With a body, I don't think you can do that right now. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it depends on what they do with science. I, maybe in time. I mean, you can get everything replaced. You know, a bionic this, uh, a bionic that, or replace this, or replace that. All right, thank you. Time and gravity certainly affects all of us. No one is immune. That's the beauty, beauty of it. Or another one, the way of all flesh. That's a great one. What else do you want to talk about? KKAT Radio. Scott, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. You are on the Savage Nation. Well, thank you, sir. You know the topic coming up of um, who your core listenership is and evangelicals and whatnot. I've been thinking a long time about who, who are the people that listen to your show as well. And I hate labels. I mean, these evangelicals, it doesn't quite describe what we really are. Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we, we know God exists and all that. But I think the, the core people that listen to your show, I could, for lack of a better label, would be the free thinkers or the truth. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, I, but each talk show host attracts a certain core audience, and then there's an overlap between all of us. There's no question about it through the entire day part of so-called conservative talk, there's an overlap between all shows. But each of us gets our own specific audience, right? And I would say I attract the largest number of free thinkers for an obvious reason, because more or less, that's who I am. Yeah, and it's not just, there's another thing about your audience that you'll notice. When we get into these little uh, discussions politically or arguments at the, at the coffee table or whatever, a lot of us are hesitant to refer that, or to admit that we even listen to you because somebody else is going to blame us for stealing your ideas, but a lot of them were ideas from the beginning, from when we were little kids. But we but actually tell people about you all the time. I, I gave my book to your brother, to, to my brother, and um, he's starting to come off the... Uh, he's starting to not Well, I hope more and more people start to see the light before November. I'm sending you a, a free copy of Government Zero so you can replace it in your library. 855-407-282, KBET Radio, Bill. You're in Las Vegas, aren't you? What's on your mind, Bill? Hi, Mike. I, uh, I'm thinking about animals and the fact that I don't believe they're conscious of their consciousness. That is, um, they they don't have souls as we do, and they don't have need for that. Uh, they're unspiritual. You, know what? you just said something that I've never read before. I love what you just said. I said the dogs go to heaven, right? And you said that you don't think they need to go to heaven because they have no souls, and you define the soul as being conscious of your consciousness. Isn't that what you just said? Well, it's it's part of it, yeah. But we have a forward-looking uh, sense of duration and and insight into motion, God word, and the awareness of the motion. Uh, you know that we are sending to a level of increasing divinity. But um, animals, they know only the past and live in the present. And, uh, you know, we, we are indwelt with the spirit and have the power of insight. And uh, That's a very, very interesting question. It's going to open up a lot of defensive calls by animal lovers who are going to argue and say that there's no question that they have a soul. I don't know the answer to it, obviously, Bill. I, I can't define what a soul is. I know this. And I've written this when I, I wrote this when I was 18 years old in a journal of mine. I said... I was in a laboratory, a bio-laboratory, and I said I was less interested in the anatomy of the animal I was dissecting than in the glint in the animal's eye while it was alive. And I said that then, and I mean it now. I'm more interested in the spirit than I am in, in the anatomy of a person, you know? Yes. Well, they serve a different function, I think, in the universe than, than what we are about as human beings. That are so what does a pet like a dog who is so loyal to us 
that we say they're more loyal than human beings, which we know to be true, and we love them, and they give us love, and they, they're with us. And when we're sad, they're sad. When we're happy, you can see their faces change. They're happy. They're little mimics. They're reflections of us. Uh, what, what, what is their role in the, in the world? Well, I guess that loyalty is, is bred of the fact that, like I say, they're just the present, and they know the past, but they are just committed to knowing just what we're going to do next. And but how do you explain stories that we read of elephants, for example, that do know the past and seem to know the future, with elephant burial grounds, with protecting the herd, with fighting to protect their young? You see that in a bear, for God's sakes. You'll see it in a, in a, in a, in a humble ant. That you could say it's pure instinct, couldn't you, and just say it has nothing to do with their knowledge. I'm not so sure that I agree with that. I don't know how God designed this whole structure and where the animal actually fits in this structure. I don't truly understand what it's all about. I know that the dog descends from the wolf. I know the wolf was a hunter. I know that the domesticated dog is a descendant of the wolf and that the original use of the dog was to guard man and hunt for man. I mean, that's a given. Then we have all these foo-foo little pets like my dog Teddy, who still retains a little bit of the wolf in himself, by the way. He has all of the instincts of the old, the old wolf that's inside his DNA. But I don't know what his uh, purpose is on Earth. All I know is he's the greatest animal I've ever had. I'm sure they have the spirit of intuition as well, but not the spirit of worship and wisdom. But... Well, they worship us. Well... Sure, but I'm saying... <laughs> I don't mean to argue with you. No, they don't know of a higher power beyond their master. That's for sure. So to, to a dog, the master is a demigod. You know, that's what we are. Anyway, there's a very thoughtful question, Bill, and it's a very important one for me right now, which I don't think I can pursue at this time because it's almost a quarter to the hour here uh, and everywhere else in the world for that matter. If you want to call on any topic other than the dog topic, the, the Trump, the Cruz, the Palin, which I oppose, her coming out from, I think, is a mistake. I said that earlier. He needed that like a hole in the head. I support him 100%. For her to endorse him right now, I don't quite get it. Is she that popular? Is she still that popular? Sarah Palin, former Alaska governor and 2000 government, who became a Tea Party sensation and favorite of grassroots conservatives, will endorse Donald Trump in Iowa, which she did. Now, why does that matter? It says her support is the highest profile backing for a Republican contender so far. I don't believe that's true. I have supported Donald Trump for a long time. I would argue my audience is bigger than Sarah Palin's. The numbers indicate they're bigger. Her following on uh, a reality show is not an indication that she has an audience. I don't quite understand what they're thinking, and I truly believe this was a mistake. This is, again, the Beltway talking. This is, again, a, the, a result of inside advisors ruining another great campaign, and they did it to Romney, and I'm terrified. If I could speak to Donald Trump, I would tell him to get rid of his campaign advisors right now. They're taking him down the wrong road. You're going to hear about this now for the next 80, 87 minutes. Sarah Palin slights Ted Cruz endorses Donald Trump. That's how the liberals are putting it. So that's what it's all about. I think it's a mistake. I don't think she has any star power. I don't think she's a kingmaker. I think her time has come and gone. I think her star has fallen. I think she's an embarrassment, by the way. I don't care how big she was with the Tea Party. I think she's damaged goods and she can only hurt him. My opinion? Uh, you know, I'm telling you like it is. I didn't read bullet points of what I should say to appeal to certain segments of my audience, of my listenership. Some I make believe I'm talking with you in a bar. I don't know what this is about. I don't know why they would bother talking to her. But okay, this is politics today. A spokesman for Ted Cruz, who has been arguing that Trump is not a true conservative, which is why you're hearing it now from the echo chamber of talk radio, suggested in advance that a Trump endorsement would hurt Palin, diehard conservative brand. A Trump endorsement could hurt Palin's diehard conservative brand? What is she selling? What does she do? to uh, Robert, what does Sarah Palin do? Does she have a line of cosmetics? Does she have a line of uh, hunting gear? I don't know what she sells. Camouflage suits? A bar of uh, yak soap? I don't understand any of this. 
So Cruz spokesman Rick Tyler says, I think it would be a blow to Sarah Palin because Sarah Palin has been a champion for the conservative cause, and if she was going to endorse Donald Trump, sadly she would be endorsing someone who's held progressive views all their life on the sanctity of life on marriage and partial birth abortion. Cruz spokesmouth Rick Tyler said, okay, so that tells you all you need to know about Cruz's campaign, that they're doing to... Uh, they're trying to do to Trump exactly what Newt Gingrich did to uh, Mr. Mitt, Mitt, Mitt Romney. Okay, so let's not un see it only one way. This is a two-way disaster. I don't know why this is such a big deal. This will be forgotten very soon. She's not a big deal. She's not a big deal. Who does she represent? I maybe I'm out of the loop. I drink coffee anyway. I mean, the thing is, I don't drink. Who is she? Does anyone think this is going to matter? Do you think it denigrates his brand or increases it? This is almost a joke when I heard about it. This, this is Someone wrote, Palin's endorsement is worth as much as Enron's stock. Unbelievable. Who is behind this? Karl Rove? Someone wrote, a Sarah Palin endorsement equals the kiss of death. I don't know. Maybe the people who uh, watch that show with the guy with the long hair who makes whistles like her. Backwoods folks. And I'm nothing, you know... I, I don't know any Baxwoods people, but I never liked the movie Deliverance. Even when I first saw it, I didn't like it. So if the Deliverance demographic is offended by this, I'm sorry. But I don't even think they have radio in their districts yet. I don't think they laid down any uh, wires. Uh, even though radio, <laughs> radio is the first wireless communication device. Isn't it true the Telegraph even needed telephone lines originally? You know, radio is the first wireless device. Am I right about that? I think so. It's still a miracle to me. I think one day I'm going to have a show, a piece of a show on how radio works. It's still a miracle to me. How does what I'm saying on a microphone in San Francisco get to you somewhere in the world? How does it transmit? What, what do you mean it goes through the air? What is this? No one even understands the miracle of radio except me. Because we're used to it. So we get used like a car, a wheel. I was thinking about the car the other day. Did you ever think that the internal combustion engine is the most advanced possible engine in the history of man and will never be improved upon? That some things are perfect? You, could, you can keep perfecting the internal com combustion engine, but I doubt very much that it could be replaced in the very near future. The idealists think that they can replace it because of the, uh, let's say, the exhaust gases and the uh, etc. What do they replace it with? A sun machine, I suppose, in the distant future. A hydrogen car. But right now, the internal combustion engine, which has been with us for a long time, is real nice. Savage.